Hello, this is Jack Dennis, and welcome to our series on John Barr. The next fly that John's going to tie is one of my absolute favorites, his tongue teaser. This is a fly that I really embrace uh, for my golden stone fly nip imitations. I've always had to struggle finding a really good golden stone and this is my pick and I always have some of my flybacks. So let's uh, join the two of us as we tie, uh, well as John ties, as I look and ask a few questions, the tongue teaser. Okay, Jack, uh, the next pattern we're going to tie here is uh, kind of an all-purpose pattern, uh, kind of like the copper. Uh, not representing any specific insect, but just a real good fish catching fly. And uh, it kind of borrows its colors from the prints, uh, the whites of peacocks and browns and whatnot. But it's, it's tied to look more like a, you know, like a, a large mayfly nymph, mm -hmm. or, or mayfly nymph, small mayfly nymph in small sizes, or stonefly nymph. Right. But it's just got those proven colors of peacock, brown, and white. Well, everywhere in the country has uh, golden stones. And I think that when you talk about a prince nymph, that's probably one of the best imitations for okay. small golden stones. And this one, I know, is a good one because I've used it before. Oh, you have? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know, I, I know a lot of the guides are liking this one. Again, we've got a, tung a tungsten cone. So how the name? It just kind of came to me. You know, tongue, tongue from tungsten. Yeah. And just kind of a teaser. Yeah. Just kind of went, you know, went together. I'm, I, you know, I could come up with some great thoughts on that, but I don't think this is that kind of tape. So we'll go Jack, on. Jack, I know thing. where you're going. I, I, I know you well enough, Jack. <laughs> There's some subtleties here. We'll remain yeah, we don't anonymous. Need to, we don't need to go there. <laughs> Okay, okay so, so tease me with this tongue teaser okay, twister. Okay, so again, something. jam the lead up in the bead. Now, what size of bead are you using on that? Did any particular, you just kind of put it on until it looks right? You know, beads come, you know, depending on how the package is, uh, yeah. extra <laughs> small, small, large, or 2.3 yeah. millimeters, 3.1 millimeters, so I don't know. And just put one on. I put. I have all the beads in my box, they're not labeled, and I just pick the one out that looks like it fits the fly. I have to admit that I go to the bead shops. It's a lot of fun. And, so my, and they never they have a whole different way of they actually go by hook sizes, fourteen, sixteen, eight like hook Yeah. The smaller, the higher the number. Yeah. I know I mean, I, the that person who did the beads must have also did the hooks because it makes no sense to anybody. Yeah, so I <laughs> I just uh pick out a bead that looks like it should fit the hook. Now the hook again? The uh, the hook again a fifty two sixty two. Fifty two sixty two. Same hook as the Copper John. Uh, thread, 70 denier, uh, UTC. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just real nice thread to work with. Okay, so we got our bead on, we got a lead on. Now we're going to put white biots in. Just like in a prince. Well, the prince has come off the front. Yeah. So you just kind of even those tips up. Tips up. Got to remember that. Do that when you're skiing too. Yeah. Get those tips up. Last time I was skiing, my tips went way up. Yeah, it's like and, when and you my, fall. <laughs> and my and my tibia came out of my Levi's. Oh, that's not. So good. that was skiing. That was really good, fond memory for my last run. My tips were really up though. <laughs> okay, and again we're wrapping that all the way up over the lead, so we're kind of building. Nice, you know, nice uniformity under there, so we don't have chop offs, and it just makes the dubbing a lot easier. Then we're going to dub this thing with gold ultra wire. Again, I'll let, tie that in all the way up the front. Now the ultra wire comes in sizes. What are you looking at as size here? Okay, uh, for most of my uh, ribbing, I use the size brassy. It comes from extra small to small to brassy to medium. Brassy is kind of a really good all around mm -hmm. size. And then it also comes large. Why is this? I mean, why did just like extra? I, I mean, why something, not? there's something about fly tires 
It just makes no sense, it's, right? It, it, you're absolutely right. Why not extra small, small, medium, I like large, brassy. extra large? But I like brassy too. But you know, brassy was the first fly. The first fly. Fly with any kind of a color. wire in it. Exactly. You know? So they still a great midge imitation. So it's a natural. Yeah, natural. Maybe that was their first size. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a, the two easiest Might flies. Have been their first size. It could be. And you know, that's probably the two easiest flies: a brassy and a San Juan worm. <laughs> yep. Doesn't take a lot of skill to do that. The commercial guys love tying oh, yeah. those. Okay, and we're going to use this uh, Arizona synthetic peacock. Oh, I love it. I love this too. It's uh, so it makes a much more durable fly than that within the prints with this natural peacock, and it's every bit as effective. And I, you can use the bronze, which uh, I like, uh, or you can use. The natural, which is uh, darker. Mm -hmm. I like. In fact, I tie about half and half. You know, I have both. You know, I have all the different peacock colors that John does. It John down in Arizona. Yeah, John Romer, I mean, he does yeah, a real nice job, job on that peacock. I have. He's boxes got about full eight, of six or seven oh, different colors. And he's got so many new things now. He's got a great scud and uh, colors and oh yeah, and wonderful uh, uh, leech pattern or uh, leech colors for leech patterns. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to make our little abdomen here. Boy, doesn't that look so good? Just look, look at it in the camera. Arizona it just, just looks like it's ready to jump out at you. See the sparkle? Yeah, the Arizona synthetic has real nice sparkle. So I'm just going to rib it with a little gold brassy, size brassy ultra wire. Right, looking great, John. And... Notice you, you for scissors on the wire. You're using some clippers. Using just some little things I got down at the craft. Uh, got down at the craft store. Yeah. Uh, jewelers. Little side cutters. Yeah, jewelers side cutters. I think is the official name is of that. Is that what they are? Yeah. Uh, and you can use brown a brown wing case on this. Uh, but I'm, again, I'm using the silver holographic uh, thin skin combo. For the wing case. Mm -hmm. But always put the holographic in first. Always put the tinsel in first because you're going to bring that over the thin side. Right. And then you put, put your little thin skin. This, is, this happens to be uh, mottled bustard, which is a real neat color, natural bustard. And that's thin skin? That's thin skin. Thin skin yeah. comes in about 50 different colors. Of course. And all kinds of cool. So I, I use it all the time. Again, you just lay that in there. Again, I tie it right up behind the bead uh, so you don't have any lumps or humps. And how do you figure the width here? You just kind of have to guess at it? Well, you, it, it kind of comes with time. I don't measure it or anything, but okay. Uh, yeah, the width of the thin skin, I'm glad you brought that up, Jack, because uh, if you make it too wide, it'll pinch the, le it'll pinch the legs down. And if you don't make it wide enough, it doesn't cover the whole top. So just you just kind of eyeball it so it's going to be just wide enough to cover mm -hmm. either your dubbed or your peacock thorax. Right. Gotcha. And that's what you've done right that's there? What we, yeah, because I, I mean, after I put my thorax uh, in, uh, hopefully it'll be about the right width. And there's a little, you have a little wiggle room there. If it's a little long, a little short, that's okay. That's no big deal. But as a rule, you, know, you want just to, uh, just to cover the top. Now, I noticed that you're using a little saliva instead of wax, and uh, that's kind of a... Uh, I know Randall Kaufman does the same thing. Everybody has their own way of putting on dubbing, but notice uh, uh, to everybody out there watching, he's putting a little on at a time, and that's the key. Yeah, I, I used wax when I was a kid, and I completely forgot about it. You just brought it up, Jack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cheaper than wax. But I tell you what, sometimes wax is in all your tools and on your fingers, and it's kind of a pain in the neck. Yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks good. It looks like a golden stone. Or a peacock stone. Peacock stone, whatever. The, the very rare peacock very stone. Very rare. Okay. Uh, you know, there's... Same stone. process. This is a little, uh, again, I was head back. I was going to tell you something here. Stop you for a second. Yeah, About sure. stone flies. You know, I've had a chance to go around the world. There's stone flies in practically every continent. And I huh. ran into some that almost were scary. They were absolutely fire red 
abdomen and black. I didn't want to touch him because wow. it, it was in Australia and Tasmania. If I, it might bite. Well, yeah, <laughs> there, there's some poison dart frogs that are red. <laughs> I know. So anything it red, you just kind of stay back. It could have been a poison dart stone. But, I mean, there are stones of all different colors in New Zealand. They have, even have bright green stones. Oh, I'd love to see those. Ooh, they're I'm beautiful. sure you get a lot of good pictures of them. Oh, I do. With In the mouths of big fish. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry I took you all out of your concentration, but I had to do that. No, that was worked out well worth it. Uh, then we just tie our little legs in, a little bunch on each side. And they're at enough buildup with the dubbing yeah. where the legs laid in there nice. They didn't go straight out. Right. I actually consciously did that. I'm glad you consciously did that. I'd worry if you subconsciously did that. <laughs> but... uh Jack, you made me lose my focus, so I guess I know. My, my tips were a little uneven on these legs, but they'll probably work better. <laughs> <laughs> so we just lay those babies in there just right back about to the... You know what's back, so fun? to the hook point. You know what's so fun with fly tying is tying together with friends. So oh, you yeah. can tease each other. And, uh, and I love to sit down on a fishing trip you know, early in the morning and all sit down and tie and... and uh, compare notes. That's how a lot of fly patterns get done. Oh yeah. Good job there. You know what I like about nymphs is you, you can leave a little stragglers and stuff. Oh, you have all kinds of wiggle room on Yeah, nymphs. I know. Uh, oh, does that look nice. There I got pulled over in one piece because yeah. it just happened to be in the middle. Yeah. So we'll just do it in one piece that time. I like that. Try to keep your wraps behind the bead to a minimum. Well, that is a nice looking color on that uh, thin skin. Yeah, it really is. And we're gonna we're gonna get this one wet. Ooh, but to really appreciate this particular nymph and the next one we tie the gold and it's, it's got to be wet. Yeah, I mean the gold the copper john doesn't look much different wet, but this one definitely does. A lot of it is that uh, Arizona stone material. Looks better when it's wet. Yeah, because see, it, it looked kind of light, but you get it, in the, you get it uh, wet. And all of a sudden, oh, it gets a real yeah. peacocky color. Oh boy, look at that! Tilt that around here so I can take a look from the top. Okay, I noticed you put in the uh, uh, the uh, hen. Did you use hen? What did you use for uh, legs on hen, this? Hen back. It's been going on so long, I forgot. Yeah, hen back. That hen back looks nice, but you could put some like span flex or little tiny rubber legs on it. Oh, absolutely. You, know, you absolutely could. Have you played around with rubber legs with your flies? As a matter of fact, I have, Jack, and uh, there's certain patterns where I really like them. And, you know, I know people in Montana, no one uses rubber legs up there. No, uh, not So at all. it'd be kind of a shock to them. You know, they'd have to get used to it. Yeah, I know. But, but I, I, do, I have added rubber legs to some of my patterns. I, they've been very effective. Now they'll let you in Montana. Now they have rubber legs. In fact, they stop you at the border. You got rubber leg? Out of here. Sort of like they used to in Colorado. You get you got a hairs there? No. Nope. Get out of here. That's funny. All right. So you're gonna show us what 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 rubber have you put to your fly? Well, uh, not the copper, John. You would do something that sacrilegious, would you? Absolutely, I would. You gonna and show I, me? I how not to only do it? would. I have. Are you gonna show me how to do it? Sure. All right. If you don't tell anyone. I won't tell anybody. Only the five million people are going to see this tape. <laughs>